Our next speaker on the community track is uh, Emmanuel Bakari. He'll be speaking to us how he got his certified Kubernetes ad, uh, application developer and also how he became a certified Kubernetes administrator. It's an awesome experience to have him here. He's a Linux guru. <laughs> so, um, Emmanuel, are you ready? Awesome to have you. Yeah, definitely. How's it going? Good morning. Yeah, awesome. I'll hand it over to you. And we'll be switching the enterprise channel to uh, live stream. Over to you, Manuel. OK. Hello. Can you hear me? And can you also see my screen? OK. Hello, everyone. Okay. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Yes. Um, so my name is Emmanuel Bakare, um, and I'm an infrastructure engineer. And at the moment, I would be um, covering details on how I went from not having any Kubernetes certifications to um, taking up the CKA and CKAD. Um, I took both exams within a period of a week, and it all worked fine. So here's how it actually went. So I'm just going to start off with like an intro to what Kubernetes is, because I think a lot of people might not really know what it does. So what Kubernetes basically helps you with is um, covering details on like how your infrastructure should be, you know, how you're going to um, typically move on from getting started with Kubernetes to actually um, using it. So Kubernetes basically helps you manage your entire application stacks, your networking, um, storage all of this you know within like a very very compact um yaml format that you can pretty much write up um there's quite a lot of documentation about it online it's a really 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 easy process using containers and everything but then the really good part about it that like, kubernetes manages a lot of things that we have done in the past you know like scaling up vms managing security managing you know network interfaces nats this that like everything you just kind of like pass it all together like a really really nice um you know as a very nice orchestration engine so um kubernetes uh, has some certifications because of the fact that the platform is really big and like it's being used like across like different organizations like it's that you know everyone pretty much uses it um it's come to be like a, almost a standard for like you know for managing applications um at least from like a global scale um, so they have certifications so that, you know, people who are starting off can actually know what they should be heading for, you know, the kind of, um, skills that they should have with using Kubernetes, um, things like, okay, fine, how does, you know, what are the various components that make Kubernetes work? What's the control manager? Why is that needed? ETC. So the certifications kind of assist you become like figuring out, okay, I should be focusing a lot on this and working towards, you know, getting everything up and going. Yeah. So. Moving on, we have like what the certifications are, and then we have like you know this. We have CKA, which is like the Kubernetes Administrator Certification. So what this is mostly focused on is okay, I have um, some um, cluster somewhere. I'm getting like some issues. All of a sudden, I can't deploy applications on it. So, or you're trying to like deploy the cluster, and you're getting like some weird errors, things like that. That's what um, the main focus for CKA is on okay without the application even working like can you actually just get the cluster running you know maximum security maximum performance you know what are the problems we would have how many nodes do we need things like that that's what the ck is really really focused on the ckd on the other hand is mostly focused on the application side so like okay i'm deploying my application what are the things i'll need okay i need the application to access another service in a different namespace okay like next Network policies to how kind of security do I need? But I still be speaking quite a lot on network policies and later on. So things like what the application really needs—that's what the um, CKA is majorly focused on. 
Um, it's also a new one that came out, CKS. Uh, I like to say pandemic because 2020 is kind of like a cost word um, at this point. Um, so what the CKS is mostly focused on is the security side of Kubernetes. So uh, in this case, you are going to be checking out, you should be using, um, so things like from the node cluster level, um, I've not really taken so much note of this particular certification. It's something I'm still prepping on doing, but it's covering like a lot of like the Linux security fundamentals, container security, cluster security, so network security, everything all together, um, so that you can manage both your applications and clusters quite nicely on Kubernetes. So um, the main talk about is more um, because um, so around um, the CKA and CK that mostly most of the Kubernetes certifications are actually hard. And to be honest, it actually is because it's a very practical exam. You're going to be working your way around actually typing commands, um, investigating things. So, so it's pretty much like you're having like some production downtime for real. Like it's um, simulated to be in a live environment. That's why it's actually quite endorsed. Um, and I can say that it's a really good exam because after getting both, I kind of like got like multiple job offers in like weeks, which was pretty much a fun thing at one because of the fact that I just had it. So, so I would really say it's a good idea to actually take the exam. Um, there are like a lot of opportunities just having it. So, um, the easiest way to actually pass this is actually by deploying the clusters manually. So. A lot of the time, like when you're actually trying to manage your Kubernetes clusters, you mostly start off with, um, you know, getting on um, using them, um, you know, AWS or some cloud provider or something like that. But for this, you are not really going to have to do that. Even even during the exams, they do deploy the clusters for you, but they deploy the clusters with faulty configurations, and you can never actually fix those problems unless you've actually done it yourself. And speaking from experience. Um, it is quite a lot. So it's almost like you're managing the clusters on-prem. Um, for those who might have done that, kudos to you. The CKS should actually be a lot easier from there. But if not, you do have some things to cover up on. It's particularly important for the CKAs, but it could also then come into the CKADs when things like, oh, you have a faulty scheduler configuration and, you know, pods just can't, you know, start because, you know, they can't get scheduled on two loads, things like that. That's like where this all comes in handy. The next thing is actually to take courses on Kubernetes. So as opposed to so there are actually a lot of courses, but the one I mostly recommend is Code Cloud, um, mostly because of the fact that they have practice tests and like the instructor is Dazem Muhammad was actually really, really thorough in terms of like his explanations of like what this does, the various components, how they apply, and then the ways that you can actually use them. So you're not just like doing a course, you're actually doing a practical exam across the course as you move along. Um, and also it's really helped because Imagine like you are learning something and you're doing it at the same time. And then you also now have like some simulated environment that's close to the CKA and CKAD environments. That's the exam environment. So it's almost like you are actually practicing to write the exam. Um, it, so like there are two courses here, the Kubernetes Administrator with Practice Test, and there's also the Certification course, which is like a bundle of both of them. So I most times just advise that you use Code Cloud if you're actually preparing for the CKA and CKAD. You can't go wrong. I'm um, taking that. The next thing is to actually practice with an actual platform that was built to help you pass it. So, um, Code, Code Cloud basically has the simulated environments, but the questions don't really cover the full depth of the exam. So, why not take a practice exam that is exactly like CKAs? That's what Killer.sh really provides. So, Killer.sh is, um, is literally spells Killer Shell. So, what they do there is that, like, they basically have like resources and some questions that are almost similar to the ones you'd actually have in the CK and CKAD. When I took them, so I took um, the CK and CKAD like between weeks. So I basically practiced for like maybe a month on the CKA. Then I used Cloud or SH a week before my CKA. I got a 92 there. I did my CKAD, I got a 90 there. And then pretty much um, it just went like that. So Cloud or SH was actually, it's, it's actually the CKA exam. You get proctored. You have a shell, ex the exact environment like what you see during the CK exam. It's the best thing you can actually use for preparing for any of the exams. They also have a CKS um, um, simulation. So it's kind of like everything that you'd actually need. I always recommend this for anyone that asks about writing an exam because it's really the best. It is a bit pricey depending on which part of the world you are in. Um, it's about 30 euros. Um, so depending on like how, um, where you are, it's not really that expensive, but 
um the fact that you have three exams in like one single payment and then you can like schedule it over a year you know it kind of like makes it very easy for you to you know take some time do the code cloud courses take some time do a test exam and see how you perform and then down the line in the exams you'd actually do quite great um and also one of the really good parts that really saved me a ton of time because it's actually because you have a lot of questions some questions carry a lot more bags and you also then have to t finish the um question within like a certain time limit so the best thing to do is actually to shorten the commands i know that this saved me a ton of time because while working through most of the exams and everything i pretty much was able to um walk around getting things done finishing up on everything so you can shorten the commands i did do an example right here where you can do something like you know you can do an alias into your bash rc and then you can you know use that command as you move along this really 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 helps especially if you are not fast at typing so like during my cka i know i forgot to do this but i'm pretty fast so it was pretty easy for me to like walk around you know getting everything done but if you know you're not that fast then this could be a very very nice hack to pass the exam and also then also because you have a lot of questions and when you're under tension you know typing those long commands and making typos can really offset your mental dynamic getting like you know, getting through it so this is actually really great and then the last thing is actually to practice um so um quavo me here because you know it kind of like bangs and i'm um, like you know, into amigos and all that so practice makes perfect um you, you you actually can't scan your way through this exam you can't read a couple books you know um it's 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 not like most certifications exams this one they really 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 have a high priority check on pragmatism and also you're protected by an external examiner so you know you can't just bring a friend in there'll be like oh i need to google a book you, you you can't google some things but it's very limited to just the docs and the api references so it's not like you can just go up and copy some you know yaml you actually have to learn what fields are there and then the various parts are needed etc etc so you have to really really practice to pass the exam but the part that i can say is that if you use killer.sh really well i really because you can't really like you actually have to type most of the commands there um you really would have any issues with um, going through most of the exams and everything i know just getting started and right to the end so um there's really not much here because it's a lot of work from your end regarding like working your way through the exams um through the test questions through um some of the materials that will be online and most of the time if you do check online for like how people pass their it's most times the same advice but the most times leave out the practice tests um platforms which is what i actually added here and um if you just use those yeah pretty much good to go yeah so um if there are no more if there are any questions then there'll be a good time yeah coco oh yeah abu bakar how's it going Okay, any questions? Awesome, yeah, that was an awesome session. Um, do we have any questions? I think the chat has been buzzing since. Uh, let's see if uh, there have been any questions so far. Okay, lovely. Awesome, yeah, that was an awesome session. Okay. Um, how do you manage yeah, I think, time? Yeah, no. Okay. Um, so regarding managing time. Okay, someone um, is asking how you manage your time. Yes. Okay, yes. So um Radu and Asakra. Um so regarding managing time, um one of the easiest ways to manage time during the exam is so so there's this hack, do all the simple questions first. Because um when you're writing the exam, you will have various um questions for um with different levels so you pretty much have to do the easy questions first I, I always advise that because those are the ones that really waste your time like they're very simple but they're also like very um repetitive so as you move to like the
if you're like doing the commands thing that I showed before, setting the aliases, you just find yourself reusing those and then you're saving time in the long term because you're going to type kubectl a lot of times, like in really lots. So the first thing is to shorten the command. Second thing is to um, practice with the test so that at least you have like um, some idea of like how the questions would be. Um, the next I think thing is here to... we'll uh, probably proceed to the next session. Uh, since we have, okay, we still have roughly 18 minutes to see if we can still join while we prepare for the next session. Okay. So, um, that's pretty much like the way we proceed to the next session. Okay. So, um, okay. So, let me uh, take this. Okay. So, um, so, okay, so I can see that there are a lot of questions, mostly due to the, uh, from the stage side. So let me take the first one, which is, um, covered on, okay, the first question is on sharing my slides. So yes, I would actually share my slides. I'll put them together so that everyone can have access. So regarding, um, the second question, which is on killer.sh. Um, yes, yes, so on killer.sh, you have to pay for the practicals. Um, it's actually needed that you pay for them. Um, they don't really host a free um, one, but 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 like, but like if you really want to take it, I could actually assist you with um, getting like the CK or CKAD set up. Um, you have my Twitter, you can just actually post me. It's something I've done in the past for some people, so it's pretty fine. Um, so um getting started with the CKA um John Sinuba, um you can um just Google it. A lot of the time the certifications and the links are actually available online. So everything kind of just works great there. Um yeah. So um the next part is also on uh what kind of resources I recommend you most. So the thing about the C the Kubernetes exams is that they are actually practical. So resources um, is mostly code cloud and killers.shell because when I went through most of them starting off, um, most of the medium blogs were nice, but they don't really cover in like how the exam actually would go from like your perspective. You know, they can describe it, but it's actually a different experience for each participant. So I would say the best you can actually take up is code cloud and killer.sh. Like those are the best two you could use. Okay. Um, okay, for the Linux Foundation, there really isn't so much. You can actually take, oh yes, there's actually a course on Kubernetes from the Linux Foundation. That is also another part that you could take. Um, so I didn't really use that one. Um, it's actually also very comprehensive and you can use that to actually pass the exams. But um, well, at that time, I mostly just used CoCloud and Kiladoshell. Shell. Yeah. Um, so how long do you take me to study for the actual exam? So um, for the CKA, I spent about two to three weeks studying. So so it turned out that I, I was already um, used to working with Kubernetes. I've been using it for about two years. So it's so 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 a lot of like the debugging, um, downtime experience, you know. So like add production experience with it. So it was pretty straightforward to like work my way around it. Hence how I was able to um, work through most of the exams. Um, so this is um, from Masio Abdul Malik. Um, Okay, yeah, the next steps after taking the CKA certification. So um, I would actually say that the certifications are meant to help you with um, showcasing your experience because um, because personally, like um, having a CKA and CKA doesn't mean you get a job, but, I'm get, but for most of my interview experiences, the fact that I had really high scores kind of like just pushed me edge in the interviews. So I wouldn't actually say that um, dealing with the certification should be the goal but mostly acing them really well so that you can showcase that as like a metric for your experience. You know, it's basically like doing school and getting a C versus an A, you know, like if you really want to get an A, you get an A and you definitely have more opportunities from there. Um, regarding the cloud provider side, it's pretty much the same platform. So you wouldn't really have any issues. You can just continue with, um, you know, focusing on using Kubernetes. It doesn't really matter. It's very platform agnostic. Um, Relevant to the B to pursue the LFCS. So um, the LFCS would actually be nice so that you could at least cover your Linux experience. 
and then do the CK and CKD because most of the um, VMs you'll be using during the exam are actually um, Linux virtual machines. So, so all your experience will just be needed from there. So yes, taking it is not really a prerequisite, but it is an optional advantage to take the course. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Okay. okay. I think I've answered all the questions. Okay. Yeah. Coco. Cool, cool. Awesome. Um, thank you very much, Bakari. Um, I think. Uh, okay. Um, Certification. Um, so there's actually no free certification, but the good part about the CNCF is that they offer you um, discounts. Um, you can actually write in for for like a discount on your CK exam. They're actually that generous. Like I remember that I did mine at a fifty percent off during that period, which was like really great. So I saved like a ton because it's about three hundred dollars to write the exam. So I paid one fifty, one fifty for both the CK and CKD. And you know that was like three hundred. So I took two courses for the price of one. So you could actually write directly to the foundation. They offer scholarships, full scholarships either way. Um, yeah. Um, what roadmap would you advise for a total beginner? Um, so the roadmap that I would advise is mostly to one at least get um, started with using the platform. And um, there's this um, there's this particular um, thing from Chelsea Hightower, Kubernetes the hardware. Um, so I will send the link in the stage to chat. So like, if you wanted to start off, you could work through this. It's actually one of the best and I think most standard way to jump in, to jump into like the platform and, you know, getting started with it in like the best way possible. So I would actually say this would be one of the easiest ways as a beginner to get started. It would take a while, but it's very very convenient for your learning process and you end up googling a lot and learning a lot and then taking the exams isn't really like a problem for them okay um any more questions okay seems like it's good yeah okay cool then so um thank you everyone um and do have a good day